Before we get started with the show, I just wanted to remind you that if you need help with your letter of intent, go to residencyhelp.com uh, to uh, look at the information there, and then let me know that you'd want to work with me one-on-one uh, at Tony the Pharmacist at gmail.com. That's Tony the Pharmacist at gmail.com. All right, let's get started with the show. All right, welcome to the Pharmacy Residency Podcast, a member of the Pharmacy Podcast Network. We are going to talk about missed APPEs or APPEs that are uh, in some way set up not the best uh, because you really wanted to uh, make sure that you had that clinical experience before you ended up doing any kind of um, you know interview for a residency uh, at mid-year and we don't know what mid-year is going to look like uh, we're thinking maybe we're going to have things as normal but on the other hand maybe we're actually going to have something completely different remember mid-year traditionally has been a sandwich of people shoulder to shoulder trying to talk to all these programs. How are we going to have a mid-year where you have 5,000 people that need to talk to all of these other people and get this extra information? Now, will mid-year be canceled? I can't imagine that that would be the case. Uh, It's such a popular thing. Uh, I know that APHA did something a little bit different in terms of just their poster virtual posters and then uh, the CEs that they provided. But again, that mid-year connection between the programs and the residents has been such a long-standing tradition. Now, imagine if we're going to have mid-year with masks or something like that. Uh, Would that be something that's okay? You're talking about really where we would be in that fourth phase where we're actually bringing people to giant stadiums and things like that and we're saying that that's okay so mid-year this year may be completely different Uh, the other part of it is that maybe it doesn't make sense to go to mid-year because if you can't have that connection if you don't really get an idea of what they're from from seeing what's going on well it may make more sense to have this kind of virtual thing. And uh, what I think might happen is that we're going to have programs that have very, very robust uh, websites with videos and presentations so that you can check them out because it had always been the residency showcase. So you're going to have videos of residents at work at the sites and things like that. And what you're going to find is that Yes, the top residencies are probably going to have these. They have a lot of money to do these things. Maybe Uh, things have been really tough on hospitals. Uh, But some of the other ones uh, may not appear well, which is really an opportunity because it's presentation. So just as before, a lot of people may overlook some programs because they say, gosh, I don't even know where that town is. You know, let's say, for example, somebody said there was a residency in Ankeny, Iowa. You're like, where is that? That's probably in the middle of nowhere. Well, it's actually just a northern suburb of Des Moines, and it's not much different than any wealthy suburb in, you know, the Washington, D.C. area or the Baltimore area. So uh, Ankeny is very much like Montgomery County in Maryland or Fairfax County in Virginia, or if you're talking about uh, just outside of Baltimore, uh, Columbia, which is a a wealthy suburb, and you would never know that. So what you want to do, and we'll talk about this later in the year, is what are the opportunities that I'm going to have? And what you're really doing is not just, okay, this This program looks great. You know, they've got these great presentations. It looks like it'd be a really amazing place. What you're going to look for is the best program with possibly the worst presentation. And you say, why why would I want that? Well, what you're doing is finding a hidden gem. You're finding that, okay, well, this is actually a great program. They just were a little busy being a great program and didn't have time to make these cool videos. But I really think that's what's going to happen is that we're going to see this kind of 
video presentation and I've just taken videography too at my community college and I, I get to take classes for free and you think okay well you know you take videos at community college well my instructor was the producer for the Jeff Foxworthy show so you know Hollywood producer uh, he did uh, also a feature films uh, one about um, it was the guy who played Rudy Sean Astin uh, but the final season and so I'm getting that kind of training and I know that when you talk about the people there, there might be like one video person or a couple people that are pretty good. But in terms of, okay, well, we've got to not violate HIPAA. We've got to get permissions from upstairs. We've got to do all these things. And I think it's going to come down to a lot of programs are not going to be able to create the kind of content that really represents how good of a place they are. But I think the residency showcase is going to be a kind of video showcase of all the things that you can do there now when you're thinking about okay well that's what mid-year is going to look like well then how am I going to communicate with them and I think it's going to be the same a couple of uh, very innovative 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 uh, students last year sent audio and you say what well, that's just a gimmick you know why would you want to do something like that? Well, think about it. As a busy parent, I listen to audiobooks all the time. I think I'm almost at 500 audiobooks that I, I have in my Audible thing. And when you think about a resident and they're exhausted, it's the end of the day, and now they get to read another dozen papers, letters of intent that start with, I want to express my sincere blah, blah, blah. It was nice to see your video at mid-year or whatever it's going to be. And you're going to be like, um, okay, I'm just exhausted. But then when they get this video or this audio from someone, and I thought this was especially important where there are regional dialects. So when I went to Gainesville for undergrad, their immediate reaction was, you're not from around here. And when you think of Florida, you might think the beaches and things like that. But Gainesville is really part of the panhandle, or many of them were from the panhandle. Uh, and you could kind of hear that influence from that southern SEC group. And certainly the values uh, were southern. And imagine if you're there and you're reading these but now you listen to somebody and maybe they're from Mississippi or Alabama applying to a Florida residency or someone from Alabama applying to another Alabama residency and you hear oh, this is what this this person is one of us we're not talking about race or gender or anything like that we're just saying okay well we're trying to find a good fit and someone that says I'm from New York City uh, coming into Alabama or someone from Alabama coming into New York City or Boston or wherever there are those very regional dialects uh, is going to sound like they belong and I'm not saying that somebody from Boston can't make it down to the south or someone from the south can't make it in the northeast I'm just saying that when you match their regional dialect, that's a real big advantage. And I think it's going to be this kind of exchange of top-end information. So while I will be helping people with LOIs, I, I do love doing that. I may be, and I don't know if this is going to happen, but when you read your LOI, it should sound really good in audio. And I think this is something that is going to be important to add, but also important for you to do, is that when you're done your letter of intent, you should read it. And if someone starts nodding off or looking at their cell phone or looking at their Apple Watch and you're like, huh, maybe I'm not igniting the spark that I thought I did when I wrote this thing. Uh, so... Uh, when we're talking about you know missed APPEs uh, and other things that we're going to need to include in this year's letter of intent you really you really want to have somebody that that understands uh, rhetorical 
moves because if you do it wrong, it's going to sound like you're making an excuse. If you do it right, it's going to make sense. So let me give you an example. Let's say your block one was canceled. And for example, someone might be doing an academic rotation with me uh, because their block one was canceled. And they say, okay, well, unfortunately, my block one was canceled in this clinical realm. I started doing an academic rotation and I focused on that clinical activity which I missed. What that really tells a residency committee is that, okay, this person runs into a problem and they don't just say, woe is me, I, I couldn't get it done. They brought up their clinical knowledge as best as they could without having that clinical experience during a replacement APPE. Okay. So what I'm trying to get at is this year, I think is going to be the year where we really see a lot of work with audio, video, and other things. And a letter of intent may become not only the letter that you have to submit the traditional way, but also the audio of intent and the video of intent. And you can always put those on there and see, okay, wow, this this person is definitely one of us. Uh, they sound like us. And then I know people are scared of video and well, how am I going to present? But what they're really looking for is, and I, I did a video on this, but could you make a professional video? Could you dress up for it? Could you do this under the lights? And you know, I'm not saying that you have to have, you know, the three point lighting that would be done professionally, but what you will absolutely have to have if a video or audio is required, and they did this last year where uh, they asked people to do interviews ahead of time so they could watch the videos on their time, the audio must be amazing. And I'm talking to you right now on a blue snowball mic, which is only $30, $40. And I tell you, if you do this instead of using the microphone internally with your MacBook Air, it absolutely makes the difference. So again, um, you know, some tips I want to give you, but some things to start thinking about. Start thinking about how things that you're doing sound in audio. Read them aloud and change them to make them more conversational. Uh, this will be maybe not so true with peer-reviewed articles that you're writing with professors, but when we're talking about talking to other people, it should sound very natural and things like that. But it's also a way for you to practice because I'm pretty sure we're going to be in the same position next year where we're going to have a lot of video conferencing, a lot of audio, and if you haven't practiced it, you would be surprised at how many ums, ahs, so's, or other things that you put into a presentation that are really detracting from the central theme or what you're trying to do. While you're doing working really, really hard to make a great presentation, the person across from you is like, okay, here it comes again. Here's another so. And they don't take away the content they take away that you weren't a very good presenter. So again, uh, let me work with you with your letters of intent so we can make it audio. The words that you would use are, you want to make it for the ear, which means that it's engaging story. It captures the things that you want to capture, but it does it so succinctly, but it also doesn't drag on and on and on. And, and in future episodes, I'll start showing you what the difference is between audio quality but also written quality a great script makes a great movie a great script makes a great presentation so a great letter of intent will make a great audio that you can record for them if they want to listen to it but i tell you if i was a resident and i had the choice between reading 12 and listening to 12 i would absolutely want to listen to 12 but that means that also that first paragraph is going to have to be a hook. You're really going to have to uh, talk about those things that really, really grab them. And uh, we'll talk about that in later episodes. So anyway, uh, if you have a missed APPE or if you have other reasons you need to explain, don't try to do it on your own. Do work with me. It's 
so easy to make the mistake of sounding like it's an excuse and most likely that's not the case. So Tony, the pharmacist at gmail.com is how to reach me and I will talk to you guys next week. Hey, thanks again for listening to the Pharmacy Residency Podcast. I do encourage you to go to residencyhelp.com, get on the mailing list. I'll send you out an email every Friday during residency season, but then afterwards uh, I'll still have a number of episodes uh, on helping you get through residency itself. Uh, And then if you're somebody that's looking at residency in the future, uh, I'll also have uh, content for that as well. Uh, If you have a question, I'm pretty good about getting back to you. And if I don't have an answer, I will know someone that does. Uh, So thanks again for listening to the Pharmacy Residency Podcast. And if you're on Apple Podcasts, please do uh, rate and review. It really matters in terms of uh, our ability to reach more people. Thanks again.